Hi, hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'll be doing an unboxing of Panzer North Africa. I think this is the fifth in the Panzer series. However, this is a standalone game from Panzer, um, obviously taking place in the North Africa, North African desert from the mid 1940 to late 1942. It's by James M. Day and Fernando Solo Ramos. However, what's cool about this one is this one includes a solo mode, which I believe um, the France um, expansion for Panzer added some a few solo scenarios, but this apparently, according to the box, and this is a heavy, heavy, thick box. I mean, it is. It weighs a lot. And uh, it's all here. Basic, advanced, optional, and solitaire rules. Solitaire suitability is high. Complexity, however, is a six. So it's still not going to be a super duper easy game to learn, but not, not too bad. So um, anyway, so let's get into it and see what you get inside. All right, love the artwork on the front. Illustration by Antonis Caridis. Sorry if I say that incorrectly, but that is just a really cool action painting of a tank battle. All right, so here we go. We start out not with a rule book, but with our map boards. There are six of them. They're geomorphic. Um, map boards. They are long, if you're familiar with the Panzer series. So these are, these strips are what are your maps. And you can piece them together to make larger battlefields or longer battlefields or however the scenario is so designed. So this is map 35. Obviously they've continued the numbering from the previous games. So here's 35 with 29 on the reverse. Not used to having maps can be so prominent at the beginning. All right, this is number 30. Some roads, some rocky areas. Let's flip this one over. Now we got a little lake, a little village. Map 36, by the way. Some forests, trees. A little ravine, looks like. Number 37, into the town, looks like an airstrip. Some roads to and from, get another crevice ravine. On the reverse we've got 31. It's a desert. Really, the roads and the little wadis and uh, oases and tree areas are going to be your major uh, terrain differences. Maybe some dunes. It's area of 32. Again, just the one big long road going across, and we got a little dirt road that connects to it. And then on the other side, we have now here we have some, looks like what's going to be some terrain height. Some hills, dunes, I would guess. This is 38. And we've got definitely some high and low areas, some rocky outcrops at the top. A little town, Zulu 38. It's located on that road. Thirty-three, again, big desert area. The road here on the right. 39, again, there's a big road coming off of it. Some side roads, paved road and side roads. I'm sure the for the tanks, being on the paved road is better. 34, desert with dirt roads. And the last of that here is 40. So in total, there's 12 different maps. There's six boards, double-sided, and they'll put together in combinations. So, all right, so now we start with, looks like a stack of manuals here. 
And these are all on the top quality GMT matte finish stock. So we have the T, O, and E manual. And there's only 20 pages. And it's uh, describing all the different units. We have the British Eighth Army, uh, the Royal Italian Army, the Africa Corps. And then descriptions of the hierarchies and the order of battle for each of those groups. And then we have the optional rules. So you'll hit the optional rules for you the rules. So you can decide if you want to use the optional rules. The optional rules are 24 pages long. And they seem, no, the, the actual that chart is a little dense, but the rules themselves are pretty good. Um, size, obviously sectioned, divided, 7.37. Uh, minefield placement. So these are, again, the optional rules. So you won't refer to this initially, I wouldn't think. Optional rules should be thought of nothing more than that, optional. While typically adding more depth of realism to certain aspects of the game, many of them come with a cost, greater complexity and or record keeping, and therefore increased playtime. There's no requirement to employ any or all the optional rules. So, that's pretty cool. So we have the optional rule book, they all have a nice artwork on them. Now we have the playbook. And how does this work? Nope. So this, this playbook is probably gonna be uh, designer notes and additional information and sequence uh, examples of play because sometimes with GMT they can be scenario books but we have a scenario book coming up so yes well okay so this one is a different this talks about the TO and E's as well then it has talks about the scenarios and how to use the scenarios um, it's only a couple of pages long, five through eight. And then we have the solitaire rules in here as well. And the solitaire rules go on for most of this book. They go from page 10 to page 23. So it'd be well, 14 pages inclusively. And then we've got a section here on the German units, the British units, the Italian units. Then the designer's notes from James Day, designer's notes from Fernando Solo Ramos, bibliography, and the solitaire tables on page 32, which are on the back here. So that is this booklet. Again, decent sized print, a lot of white space, a lot of call outs here if you need them. Let's see if they get a summary of what the solar rules are about. All right, Solitaire rules from page 10. Most wargamers enjoy playing their favorite game, Solitaire. Playing Solitaire not only lets players enjoy the game, but also allows them to learn to master the rules and practice new tactics. Nevertheless, playing a two-player game, Solitaire, has its own shortcomings. The player always knows where enemy units are, and most importantly, what they're going to do, which somewhat limits the enjoyment of Solitaire gameplay. The Panzer Solitaire rules are intended to offer the solo Panzer player a guideline to enjoy the game, fixing the two aforementioned problems of Solitaire play, enemy unit placement and enemy intentions. The Panzer Solitaire rules use the hidden unit rules to manage the player's knowledge about the exact location of the enemy units. The player only knows the most probable locations of the enemy and only when an enemy unit actually appears on the map does the player know the exact number and type of those enemy units. In addition, several tables handle the behavior of the enemy, determining their commands and their actions all without compromising the standard Panzer rules. So that's pretty darn cool. And I wonder if these can be backwards applied to the previous Panzer games. That would be pretty cool. So now we have Scenario Book 1. So Scenario Book 1 is mighty thick. It is 68 pages. In the back you have a map of the campaign area. And this, these are the actual scenarios. And we have in this game, uh, well, Scenario 47 through 57. Um, yeah, so that's 10, 11. And then we have um, the North Africa campaign game, which has scenarios 58 to 61. So you get four more scenarios there, including, and each of those has an A and a B. So uh, maybe count them as six scenarios. And each scenario looks like it takes up maybe about four or five pages each. So for example, let's look at one here, scenario 47. The Frontier Wire Raid on Sidi Omar and the Libyan-Egyptian border. 
describes the situation, tells you which maps you're going to use, in this case 29, 31, 34. And again, this is a standalone system. I mean, not a standalone system, but a standalone game in the system. So you can just buy this and be playing all the maps, all the, all the counters, everything's going to be in this box. Um, shows you how to set up the maps, tells you if you need any overlays, where to put those, and special conditions, set up, victor conditions, and then your order of battle. In this case, for the Italians, the British. And that is an example of one scenario. So that's scenario book one. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Call before midnight tonight and we'll give you scenario book two. Wow, scenario book two. Same setup, we already know how to use the scenarios. But now we have scenarios 62 through 78. So we got another, what, 17 scenarios here, which take you further into the war. We have uh, Operation Crusader, which looks like a, a connected campaign, then Battle of Gazala, uh, then Alamein, and then the Tigers roam Africa, and the end of Blade Force, December 1st, 1942. So again, and this one is also 64 pages. Wow. And now we have the basic and advanced rules. Another thick book. And these are your rules. This is 68 pages. Get a lot in here. So this has all the rules starting from the beginning. Cruft on there. Uh, describing the components. Again, a lot of, a lot of uh, color, a lot of examples in the rules. So don't be too scared off from them. I can't normally, you know, normally I tell you where the uh, optional rules are. We now know in this one the optional rules are in another book. However, we do have advanced game. So we have the basic game here, which takes up about 21 pages. Not too bad after we get past the components. It's really about 14 pages, maybe, of basic rules. And then starting on 22, we have the advanced game. And we'll see what they say about the uh, advanced game in terms of when you bring that into play. The advanced game adds many new concepts and processes that expand on those found in the basic game. In some cases, the advanced game just adds more depth to the basic game. However, in other cases, it adds completely new concepts. When reviewing the advanced game, keep in mind that all basic game rules will still apply. In many cases, the advanced game may be treated as drop-in modular rule sets. They can be used as called for or as desired, but in many cases, they are not required for play. So. These seem like they're also optional rules, really. If you want to play the basic game and enjoy just having some good, you know, tanks shoot them up, then you can do that, and then you can add this, and then you can add the advanced rules. So it's like two levels of optional rules. So that's what we have there. We have a nice index um, at the back here with, uh, instead of directing you to pages, it directs you to rules sections, 4.6, 6.1, 4.2, which obviously then you can find using the rule book. Now we've got a ton of cardboard here. We have a ton of cardboard. So we got some thick counters and then we got some thin, looks like overlays. Let's go through those first. Okay, so we have, let's see, five, six overlay sheets. Now these are just going to punch. They're a little thinner than counters but they're designed to just sit on top of the map and they are single-sided. So you don't have to worry about, oh, what's on this side versus this side. And you can see, clearly see their shape because they've got the white borders here. So we've got some hills, we've got some tree areas. So that's what when the scenario tells you which overlays you're gonna use. And the good thing is they are numbered. This is LG2, uh, this is uh, Oasis1, MG4, H2.04. And so you can find them based on the scenario setup. So we'll just take a look at what you get in the sheets. So here we got a big town area, little town, little road area, some buildings. They'll get added. So the maps are kind of plain, but then you can put them together and, and use these overlays. That's kind of cool. So we got these riverbeds, looks like, or, or chasms. And then we've got these sand areas, 
may or may not overlap or look like hills because they look a little darker than the surrounding sand. So going to be hilly areas there. And then we've got some rocky areas. See, they're all going to figure, affect your terrain. That's number five. And then number six, got a big, big hill. Little strip barricade or, you know, barrier. And then another hill with an odd irregular shape and then a little, a little garden there. So those are your six sheets of overlays. And then we've got eight, eight sheets of counters. And these are big counters. These look to be one inch or so. They are not pre-rounded. If there's anything nowadays that would that would be I don't even call it a strike. It's just it would be nice if these were pre-rounded since they're so big and, and, and ready to go. But uh, so we got our different forces here. We got some. Uh, this is Italian forces, German forces. But these are big. Looks like one inch, seven eighth inch counters. So you will have to punch from the sprue and then probably round them with a organ laminations 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder, the correct tool for the job. Got another sheet here of tanks. Got a few, uh, got a plane on here. We got some leaders. Various armored fighting vehicles here. It's got some British. Counter sheet three. It's all German all the time here. Some artillery. Well, that's interesting. All right, that's kind of interesting and annoying. I didn't show you the back of this one. And let me do that. So, these are not the same front and back. So, so this grant doesn't become reduced on the back. This grant on the back is a is a mark what 6b tank so you will have to learn what's on what side hopefully they did not make the mistake of putting different things on different counters so like these are all matilda twos we flip it over yeah, they did. They did make that mistake. So we've got A10 Mark IIs here, but then these Matildas are Crusader ones. So it gets very annoying trying to find which counter you need because you can't just go, I need this, which is always this side. Uh, so that's that's kind of a disappointment there that they uh, that they did that. Kind of a, that definitely is a strike on this. Yeah. All right, so just something, to, just something to watch out for and be aware of. You can't, it's very hard to sort these now because you don't know what's where. So here we've got the Germans, we've got some trucks. We'll go and look at the other side. So like I was, what noticed it here was that these had some uh, artillery guns on these can on the backs of these counters. I was like, oh, they're not the same thing. So mm. I guess, you know, as, as many sheets as they got here, they just, they had to do what they had to do, but Again, that's just going to make it a little more inconvenient for the player to set up. So this is sheet four of eight. There are eight sheets of counters. Wow, that's a lot. Sheet five. Now we're getting into the small uh, infantry counters. So we got control markers here. We're just on one side, German, Italian on the other. Um, so just different manpower units there. Now we got just number six, gives us some uh, markers. Various things buttoned up or uh, on fire, targeting markers. Crew bailing markers, dust on or off. So those. 
Killer Sheet 7's more markers. Again, these are smaller, these are about half inch or nine sixteenths. Got our fire markers, movement markers, fire and or move markers, overwatch mode, command point markers, or command markers. And then finally we've got our got some turrets for the tanks and then some more move fire, short halt, victory point. Rubble, smoke, overwatch, and your turn marker. All right, lots of cardboard here. Here we go with more. So we got reference cards. We have our vehicle data card key. This is on the GMT coded card stock. Vehicle data card key. So you're gonna, we're gonna have these cards here that show them and this just tells you how to read them. So we got the leg data for leg troops, vehicle data. Toad data for the various artilleries, card key, and then your turn track, transport summary, hidden units. And then for aircraft data, how to read those cards, artillery, how to read those cards. And then looks like another turn track, transport and summary track, and hidden unit track. So there's two, two of those. And then we've got game card A. There's two copies of this. This is the double width. Coded cardstock gives you a lot of your reference charts. Armor piercing hit, hit modifiers, GP fire modifiers, GP combat results, hand to hand modifiers, close assaults, terrain effects, spotting ranges, so on and so forth. And you get two copies of card A. Well, card A is on the front, card B is on the back. So it's one card, but card A and card B are on both sides. Then we get GMT's bag of bags and we get four dice. You get two white, black, and a blue. And it looks like, well, if zero is a 10, then white one, otherwise black one. So they work. And then we've got our stack of reference cards here. Take a look at a few of these. Now these are very thick. These are as thick as the counters. That's part of why this is so heavy is all these counters and cardboard in here. So this is a G15A, G16A, and again, the guide cards tell you how to read these. So and then we got some artilleries. These are obviously German, some Italian. Touch what their purpose is and their different stats. And then, so you've got, you got stacks of those here and a lot of British ones as well, so. Anyway, if you pick up a copy of this beautiful big box of Panzer North Africa, you're going to get all those unit reference cards. You're gonna get four dice. You're gonna get the bag of bags. Two copies of the double width game card A, game card B combo. You're gonna get the key cards to tell you how to read those cards that we just saw in the bottom of the box. You're going to get eight sheets of counters and markers. You're going to get six sheets of overlay counters. You're going to get the big book of basic and advanced rules. Basic rules, only about 14 pages. So just keep that in mind if you want to get started. Scenario book one, scenario book two. Like Frampton Comes Alive, it's a double album. You're gonna get that playbook. You're gonna get the book of optional rules. You're gonna get the TOE manual and six double-sided long map mount, mounted map cards, geomorphic, that will combine to play all the scenarios in this game. And that is everything in Panzer North Africa from GMT Games. Designed by James M. Day and Fernando Solo Ramos. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.